welcome back to my huge channel everybody today we're going to talk about the fashion topic of this week i guess it's daniel lee leaving bottega veneta what happened and, yeah we're screaming what happened if some of you recall my very first video ever on youtube uh, it's kind of a funny story because i was sitting right here actually and thinking about uh, what I should talk about and I just decided to bash Bottega a little, especially Daniel Lee because I couldn't see any of these street style looks, any of these key pieces he designed for Bottega anymore and I was kind of devastated also because it just didn't look good in real life and it was overpriced and, and it wasn't niche what you anymore. Did. You ruined his fate. Yeah and, and, and I mean I don't want to say it but I c might have influenced caring uh, for making that decision. If you have a huge channel bashing on the poor guy. And no, yeah, I know. I know. I, I actually didn't expect uh, to, me to be that influential, but apparently I am. So no, just kidding. But um, yeah, it's just a funny story because I just started with this topic. And back then I really could not have imagined that we will ever see this line, this sentence on any newspaper like Daniel Lee is leaving Bottega. Uh, because um, as you know, Thomas Meyer was like for 18 years or something the designer of Bottega Veneta and I mean there were a lot of people who were aware of that brand because it was still a very successful brand in the portfolio of Kering but um, I mean most of the people realized that this label was existing with Daniel Lee because he really managed to um, kind of recreate this brand, create a new brand identity uh, create new core pieces, new bestsellers and everything. So maybe we should just round this thing up, um, start with Daniel's Lee life a little and then just continue um, to what we think about it. What are the options? What can be like the next, who can be the next Daniel Lee? Well, I, I actually have no clue, but there are some you know, some rumors. Find him a new job, poor guy. He doesn't have a job. Then. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm really curious here who, uh, where he will be going, if he's going anywhere, because there are also some other rumors that he won't be going anywhere else because there is a certain topic. I will come to that. So before I start, do not forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done that yet, which you obviously have, but I just wanted to remind you, uh, or just follow me on Instagram where I also share a little bit of my fashion. Uh, life, which I don't have, but um, I post some stuff. <clears throat> so it's not really that I changed my mind completely when it comes to Daniel Lee, because I can imagine some of the comments already that be like, oh my god, you used to kind of hate on him or bash him, and now you are trying to be more understanding and everything. No, I mean, it's I still see it now in a different context. I mean, there has changed something with the brand. So um, I read a few interviews about him and it's always, you know, the human is like that. The more you read about the person, the more sympathetic you yeah. kind of feel like he Pisces. is. It's not that Pisces alone. Yeah, I'm a Pisces, so I'm very easy to get influenced. So if you send me like some interviews about you or something, I might like you more. Uh, anyway, so he, he was talking about his life. He's, um, he's coming from a very little small town. Uh, in uh, northern parts of England, I think it's Bradford, which is funny. It's also this uh, city where Hockney is coming from. Did you know that? Whoa! Yeah, it's the city of uh, it's the city of Hockney. So he has a very close relationship also because Hockney that was. Is... He's not American. No, no one knows that. So. Uh, yeah, maybe it's always also some someone he could look up to. But anyway, okay, another okay. topic. So um, he was talking about his life, and he said it has not been easy as a gay and um, ginger little boy be, to be in a little town and um, to be kind of different than the other kids are. So, um, but he never had this time in his life where I was like, okay, I knew I was going to be a designer when I was 10 and I wanted to dress my mom or my dad or anything. He didn't say anything like that because that's what Tom Ford said. That was also Not very funny. Tom Ford, Tom yeah. Ford is more like, I didn't like how I looked like when I was five and I told my mom to change that. And I didn't like the way my mom's hair looked when I was seven and I told her she needs to redo her hair. I mean, that's what, that was a bit sassy, but he was a bit more down to earth, Daniel Lee. And he was like, okay, it wasn't like, he didn't have a struggling childhood. It was just a very basic suburban childhood, I would say. And the moment everything kind of changed for him was when he um, found connection to the um, 
yeah, to music and that was especially techno music and i do not know if you have been like a raving kid in the 2000s but uh, techno or electronic music was really uh, it wasn't as revolutionary as it was maybe in the beginning of the 90s but it definitely had a very strong impact still on a lot of kids in the 2000s with a lot of underground cl clubs and he said when he was going there after school or at the weekends it was the only place where he felt like he could be his true self he could be just as free as he wants to be he said there are people i mean there was this elderly woman she was obviously like above 60 years old she was just dancing with a puppet at the weekend and then there were like naked people and there were like crazy other people sounds like and Berghain sounds like Berghain I mean we have a little story about Berghain also here but um, yeah and that was like the place where you felt the safest the freest and that's also what we still see for example just the fact that we saw the latest collection in Detroit was also like to, trying to acknowledge the music industry that comes from Detroit and stuff well some people also say that was the reason why it was kicked out but um, I'm, I'm not sure about that. So uh, he, he started to get a stronger relation with music actually and he in some time decided to um, learn professional dance and he started to get dance lessons and he also said like that is the freest version of a human self to express oneself uh, with dancing and this is actually something very beautiful um, so uh, he started also with yeah, professional dancing and later went to St. Martin's and started designing. And um, then he made like a lot of internships and then went to Celine under the head of Phoebe Philo and obviously later on landed the Bottega job. And uh, well, he had the chance to work with um, Magella personally. I mean, he was just an intern, so he was obviously not the right hand of Magella. But when they asked him like, okay, what was the thing you found the most interesting about Magella? He said like, well, he was the most analytical person ever he experienced, uh, especially as a designer to work because usually designers and all creative people and all people in creative fields actually um, tend to be very impulsive, very emotional. And because that's like the, the way to express yourself. And that's also, you know, the thing that you generate. I mean, if you're a graphic designer or if you're a, a technical designer or whatever, what you want to create is usually like a manifestation of an emotion. Um, I mean, that's also what we see in ready to wear usually. So it tends to be very emotional and impulsive uh, and you usually um, go for your guts. But Magella apparently wasn't like that, not at all. He said he was more like a mathematician, which is very interesting. Uh, and he said it was everything was well planned. There was no stress ever uh, in the uh, atelier or anything. And nobody was ever stressed and um, everything was planned so well even when they had the show everything was planned nothing was in last there was no such thing as last minute and I think I mean we have seen a lot of insights of the fashion industry and stuff the only thing I can think of when I think of a fashion show is like models taking clothes off and on and everyone just being stressed and I think this is something the stress level is something they have like just ongoing because they have their deadlines, their shows, and everything but needs to be on point. supposed to be like this. Yeah, I also saw, thought that Isn't it's supposed to be like missing? that. Like, I thought you cannot change it because the schedules are just too tight, you know. You, they, they cannot just work easier, but I mean, apparently, if you plan it well, it works. And he also says he couldn't be a person like that. And I know that a lot of people say that he seems to have a very strong ego as well. I mean, I do not know that. I have not read enough about him. And actually, we do not also have a lot of sources about Daniel Lee that yet. Um, I mean, just a few interviews he had since he joined Bottega. And that was, was he like just as impulsive awesome. as uh, Magella? As in what? Terms of, uh, in terms of not giving interviews, being a private I know, not that. But he's always like, yeah, it's um, because um, well, when they asked him what... what mysterious. Yeah, and... yeah, he said like, yeah, Magella managed that. But to me you know when you're reading between the lines it was like yeah he managed to be that anonymous person to create even more tension and to create even more awareness for the brand you know it seemed like Magella is doing this very tactically which can be the case but it wasn't like a very sympathetic move of him and he also said like yeah and well he man managed to be the person people talk about prior to talking about the clothes you know when you're talking about Magella it's usually like 
wow, is that an anonymous genius? And then you think about the clothes and he said like, yeah, he's a, one of these designers that managed that. And I would love to be a designer um, in that position. So obviously he wants to be a designer that is being talked about. And um, I mean, of well, course, it gets talked about a lot, really. Hmm? Now it gets talked about. Well, now it gets talked. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I totally understand that you want to. I mean, that's what um, what actors want. That's what everybody wants. Who's kind of in an industry where it's about you and your talent. But I mean, if someone's saying like, I want the clothes and stuff to be not as important as I am. I don't know. It's maybe something I would not have said in an interview. And he said, like, yeah, I would have loved to achieve that. I mean, maybe it was just a compliment to Madrella, but reading in between the lines, I didn't feel like um, it was just about the clothes and the, your talent, but also about the, the popularity and the awareness you want to create about yourself. And he's also said, like, yeah, you know, Madrella, he, he had this very famous collection where he was just influenced by a random person. He saw in an underground station or something on the tram and it's not possible for him anymore because he's just not that anonymous anymore and then i was like i mean who would recognize him on the street i was like i don't know maybe in london yeah, but definitely not me maybe i would recognize Magella. i've seen like three photos on him he also has like three photos on the internet that's all but no but i was like okay like i don't think people in london would like recognize you everywhere maybe if you're going to a very fashionable place but they're like every other place in europe probably won't recognize you and uh, it was so funny because he had this sentence in the interview where he was like yeah you know it was such a good time designing at boutique uh, it, it was an interview of it from april april this year so he was still thinking that he's gonna stay there and he was still working at Bottega okay. and he was like yeah and we have like he's he's not a scheduled person he said I like I just like to work like the flow is going and I totally understand that like from an artistic point of view that you kind of like have to from wait from a procrastination perspective from a procrastination really perspective that's good. totally me not having a schedule no but um if you create something that is like coming i mean i do not know how to things and ideas find you i know yeah i mean, it's, I mean what is if you get like a huge idea like eight at eight uh, p.m and your whole team wants to go you just say guys you sit right here we're going to continue that's what he did and uh, did obviously but uh, because he said um i will i will put it right here the the, the quote he was like yeah and we had like very long late hours and this is like one of the biggest critiques I also read in other interviews yeah, I mean, about him. Underpaid people that they, love that. Yeah. I mean, that was also something I was surprised about because, and teach me if I'm wrong, wasn't that just like always the case in the fashion industry that you have like very long, unhuman working hours? I mean, we all kind of have that sometimes, you know, but I think office people still are. Of course, it's worth it for the success of Daniel Lee and yeah. the brand. Yeah, I mean, if he has done... People forget about you. Yeah, I mean, this is, but, but this is also the reason why I don't think that this argument could have been the reason uh, to, to fire him, you know? Like, there because was no, no potential issue of harassment, which could... Kind not of harassment, but many people... Um, just left the company uh, within these two oh, and a half years. Find enough people. I mean, I don't think it's that easy Ortega. because the higher you get, I think the harder it gets to find like nah. proper quality people. Nah. And there were like more and more people um, just left the company, and um, because they weren't able to or didn't want to work under these working conditions anymore. And Daniel Lee apparently is a very bad boss and didn't care about that. Still hire a full brigade of volunteers and interns for next yeah, to nothing. Yeah, but maybe it's not the same quality. You I mean, I can not even... for them. No, you? I wouldn't. I, I'm I over know, that. I'm old, over that point. Know, you know, 10 years ago, I would have done anything for free. But uh, not anymore. It's just I'm getting old, guys, and life is worth yeah. something, actually. So, um, yeah, well, one of the reasons why people think he might have gotten fired is um, are the very bad working conditions which to me didn't make sense at first glance because i was like okay this is obviously like something very normal inhuman but normal unfortunately in the fashion industry you know like unpaid interns that's something we read a lot about uh inhuman working hours you know until like 11 12 p.m 3 a.m ongoing um, and you know maybe also the fact that he wanted to have his shows always in a different city I also read that um, planning everything for Detroit must have been very very hard and people were 
really they, at their they limits. They did a show in Detroit. In Detroit, yeah. In did Berlin. Did he have shows in Detroit? No, 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 he just uses a different location because he didn't want to have a physical show, so uh, he ah, creates okay, these so they went, shows. went to the deserted areas. And yeah, so they, and he also wanted to uh, kind of acknowledge like Detroit's music industry and because it's actually a very important I'm city sure when it comes to... It's not only because of Eminem, if you watched 8 Mile. Uh, not 8 Mile, but the other mile. I don't know. But yeah, Detroit is not Green a mile, no, was area, mile. I feel like. Yeah, it's, it's a very important techno area and it also has... He also said he, it's very comparable to, to his childhood because he was coming from a um, little small town that was where a lot of working class people uh, were working in the mines and not mines, I think it's a mines and in Detroit also, so it was actually a poor city with a very strong uh, music affinity such as his um, little village where, where he was coming from. So that was actually a beautiful idea but apparently it was just not easy to create this show and people were really damaged in terms of yeah, their life and the workload they had to uh, manage. So that is one of the reasons. The other one is that... What was another one? Someone also said that the prices might have been an issue, that they were like so exorbitantly expensive. It was not relatable anymore, but that's like definitely not the case. Because first of all... Because you still think stuff is cheap. No, but I mean, they just were uh, having a positive development when it came, came to their revenue. So they had a lot more profit. I think they were growing like with plus 8% in terms of Corona and COVID. So, uh, I mean, all other labels, I think, were negative and they were just still improving, even <coughs> though they have like 300 stores, which also might have been closed. So the price issue is definitely not a thing. And people who know the brand from Thomas Meyer times also know that it has always been like very expensive. Like Bottega has always been like, I do not know if it's like Chanel niveau, um, I assume it is, you know, it's really not like Saint Laurent or anything, it's even more expensive. So that's the, also not one of the issues I would say. Um, also another thing that is being talked about is who's going to be the next designer. And Karen also said that uh, in their announcement that they will have a very new, design perspective, so apparently another person. Like one person that is being talked about is Mathieu Blasi, and it's like a bit similar to the Alessandro Michele story at Gucci, who also kind of raised up uh, from the inner circle of Gucci um, <clears throat> and becoming the new creative director. And Blasi is also the um, design director at Bottega right now and used to work for as a design director at Calvin Klein under Ralph Simmons. And before that, I think he was also at Celine uh, under Phoebe Philo and also at Maison Magella. So he kind of has the same CV as uh, Daniel Lee has. So uh, there is a possibility of him uh, going to be the next uh, new creative director of Bottega. So if there's always the same pattern how you hire people, they will have to have worked for Phoebe. They will have to. Yeah, work. kind of. Yeah, maybe that is why. Oh the only way to, I get, the to get the <laughs> to crack algorithm. the algorithm. So apparently, you have to have been under Phoebe Philo, which is not possible right now, or Maison Magella, which is not possible under Magella anymore, or Ralph Simmons. You can go to Prada, so maybe you can make it then. Um, of course, it can also be like a totally different designer. I think whoever will come. I don't think that they will be able to accomplish what he accomplished because no matter how much I didn't like these squared sandals and this leather pouch for like 3000 euros that was totally unnecessary um, I still think he managed to uh, redo the brand totally and uh, do not do that really like in a very um, bad way also uh, objectively I have to say that the ready to wear is definitely lacking to me um, I was not sure about the quality. I also managed to have a look at some pieces from close up and I mean the prices are really like very extreme and um, it's not even though I mean I don't even understand prices at Chanel and being a heritage brand to me is not a reason uh, to be able to um, decide on whatever price you want. But at Botec, I was really like, okay, this is like a total new shit. So why do you want like 3K for uh, a sweater or something? But that was the case. So um, I do think whoever is coming and... Um, Have you applied yet? 
No. No, I haven't applied yet. But who could come? Who do you have to do? Maybe Phoebe is Phoebe is secretly coming. I mean she wants to create her sustainable label we are all waiting for, so maybe he's going to Phoebe, but he won't do that. I mean he could go to I mean she he can't write no name please. He no name? I mean I like guess Daniel knows that no name. I mean, and no, what I mean is she should buy someone or uh, hire someone not known so because for Daniel Lee she will have now have to pay a Bottega salary for him. She will have to pay that and also she's like obviously the creative director of the brand so she doesn't need another one. And I don't think that he will want to just join the team so that also doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. um, you know I could imagine him to go to a smaller label now because I also feel like he kind of wasn't very happy with Bottega maybe. I mean, also, I mean, of course, there are these people who say they, they, um, he treated them very badly and he wasn't actually just a good boss. He was like a very bad boss. That's what the people say. So maybe he will try to join a little label, a smaller one, you know, more like, uh, like Coperni or something. I mean, they also don't need a creative director. Sure no, they don't need a creative director. Obviously, they are the ones, uh, the two of them are designing, but, um, I mean, what I would love is actually to see him again with a very uh, extreme heritage brand, you know, like going to Pucci or something, you know, like going to an Italian house that is just not that cool Does anymore. Does Pucci ever have really... Um, They're not cool, you know, they, it's also yeah, like... They, they like also do the same, always the same stuff. They're yeah, not it's really always the same pattern since the 60s, there. which I love, you know, if you're giving me a whole Pucci suit, I'm gonna wear it. But maybe he could lift that up. So I would love to see him at a label that, or like, you know, like Max Mara or something, maybe he can manage to do it a bit cooler, or maybe like, they, not that <coughs> or maybe it, like but... Boss or something. But Boss is, I think, too contemporary. It's not luxury enough, I guess. It's definitely not luxury enough. But after Bottega, where can you go? I mean, Saint Laurent is busy right now with Anthony Vaccarello, and they're, I think Anthony Vaccarello is doing his job pretty good. Jonathan Anderson is busy, busy, is busy with Lambert. Um, then Marnie is set well, and but you never know. You thought Gisanda, the, was set as well, the Mayas are well at the Maya, at Jill, and um, yeah, and that's it. And there are no other labels that you can could yeah, go to, but there, are, I mean, the big labels are pretty pretty busy. So I mean, there are also like some rumors right now that he should go to Burberry, where where um, Ricardo Tisci is not that happy, uh, apparently not, and also not very successful. I think he. You have that jacket that is beautiful. I actually like Ricardo's Burberry kind of. Which 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 one do I have? You have the trench for no, the jacket from Ricardo. Oh, that was from Ricardo. That's right? from Ricardo, but he is not I very see, successful. I, stuff I mean, mean, just because the stuff is. Nice. It would be good. I think after Christopher Bailey, nobody really managed to do a good job at Burberry. I mean, do you remember the Burberry Prosum times, guys? It was oh. a, it Even was a blast. It. Yeah, that was it was really like them. extremely beautiful and also not successful because I think it was too unique, too it niche. Was old, true, they closed down. The problem closed. is the Burberry customer. They yeah. want to be cool and be like up next and next level, but the and customers they... want to buy their trench coats and their scarves and their you know and their and their umbrellas and that's what and you know these very uncool bags where you can't fit your laptop bag and it just doesn't look good. And the shoes usually are also not that strong. The problem, yeah, I mean, that's the issue you have when you just do not the um, really nice target the real the good customer. In, yeah. It was insane. Yeah. I mean, you remember the Spain jacket from Dark Knight? Um, he just had the best shielding codes. Like Christopher Bailey did a great job, whatever. And Ricardo Tisci kind of, I think, I mean, I also have to think, have to say the quality of Burberry is not like very intense and very good in many ways. I mean, I um tried on a few pieces i mean your jacket is great but there were like blouses and shirts and stuff where i was like okay well this is 800 bucks but it definitely doesn't feel like 800 bucks so um this would be maybe logical you know that um he's going there and tisci is maybe going back to new york uh, there are also some rumors that um yeah he wants to go back to new york because he doesn't feel well uh, at burberry because he's not very successful and I mean, he will never reach his Givenchy times, Ricardo Tisci, I think. That's something you have to deal with as a designer, that you have this one peak point in your life. I mean, that's also what I said about Phoebe Fine with Celine. I mean, I wished it would be different, but I don't really believe um, that she will have this huge of a peak like she had at Celine. 
um, and which is uh, totally fine, but I think it's hard for your ego maybe for, in terms of from the perspective of a designer speaking. So these have like been the only things that were talked about. We have actually no clue what is going to happen. I have to say I was very surprised. I don't want to say I was shocked, but I was very surprised and also questioning this whole thing because I mean, it seemed to be like a very strong win-win situation for Bottega and Kering right now. And also like the stock fell and everything. I mean, they lost like 860 million when the news came out that Daniel Lee is leaving. Seriously? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With the drop fall of only minus 2%. Couldn't, couldn't you tell that? Like, like, I could have bought the stock and options for... <sighs> like, well, no. I mean, it fell. You had to yeah, buy it. Yeah, but you can like... bet on falling. Oh. Okay. Good thing I studied business administration, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, these are the topics. So I would be really like to know what you think about this. Do you think it was a good decision at caring? Do you even care about it? I feel like many people watching this video right now um, don't actually like Daniel Lee or don't want, even want me to talk about this topic. But I thought like, damn it, everyone's talking about it. I kind of have to address this topic. So that's what I did. I hope you still like this topic and um, yeah, do not forget to tell me about your opinion. I'm, I'd really like to and know that. If you know someone's getting fired, just drop me an email. What? And you know someone is getting fired from me. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, and yeah. Okay. And do not forget to subscribe also. And uh, see you to the next video. Um, see you in the next one. Okay. Well, this ring light is like... Is it the light or is it...